Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and I've got a few neat things to talk about today. Uh, let's go ahead and kick off the first one with the new addition to the near field scanner, and that is the ability to measure drivers. And this isn't new to the near field scanner itself, but it's something that I've acquired recently. And the cool thing about it is now I can measure more drivers, which I haven't done in a while, and, and really because I've been too excited about having the near field scanner, so I've been focusing just on speakers, but I have been meaning to get back to measuring drive units. And the first one that I measured was a B&W speaker. This comes from one of their center channel speakers, and I'll throw up an image here in a second. And as you can see, it's about a four inch mid-range, and it's actually a buddy of mine, so he loaned it to me. Uh, the way that I'm doing my measurements for drive units now is I have built kind of like a, a swappable faceplate, similar to what many people who measure drive units do. Uh, it's similar to what I had before, but this time I've just cut out some round circles and I'll have different size baffles depending on the size of the drive unit that I'm testing. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, it just makes it a little bit easier on me when it comes time to test these different size drivers. So if I want to test a large woofer, then I'll use a different size driver and I'll mainly be testing smaller drivers so I don't need as big of a baffle. In this case, I'm going to be using, it's about two feet by two feet. So uh, I don't know what that is. That's maybe 0.6 or so meters, 0.7 or so meters uh, ballpark for those who want to know. Uh, but yeah, so with the baffle, I make little face plates. So this is about an eight inch in diameter circle. And what I will do with that is I will take it and then I will cut out the smaller circle to mount drivers to. And then once I do that, then I just take this guy and I put it onto the baffle and tighten it in from behind. Now, the one interesting thing that I have run into and something that Clipple even said, you know, to be cautious of, and it's an issue that I ran into with my old baffle. When I had a, an old baffle, I built an eight inch uh, version of their IEC baffle. And, and, I, and I don't mean actually eight inches, but the IEC baffle has different sizes. They have one, I think it's an eight, 10 and a 12. And depending on which drive units you're using, that's how big you'll build the baffle. This one was literally as tall as my upstairs room. It was like eight feet tall, almost it was huge. Uh, but with the Clipple near field scanner and the baffle module, I'm able to get away with a smaller baffle because it will be able to detect short edge, um, edge, what's the word I'm looking for here? Not edge diffraction, but shortcuts due to the baffle width. And it also will be able to detect diffraction issues from the edge of the speaker. And it will basically just say, oh, I know that's a reflection. I know it's not part of the baffle and I'm going to mitigate that basically. Uh, it works a little bit more advanced than that, but that's kind of the essential uh, way that it works. So essentially what you get when you do the raw measurements as you get a infinite baffle measurement. Uh, but anyway, going back to what I was saying, I've run into a couple resonances and it's kind of interesting how even a two foot by two foot tall a baffle that's made of three quarter inch birch ply can still cause resonance. And it's, it, I don't, it's kind of funny in a way. It's quite annoying because you have to troubleshoot it. Uh, I've tried CLD, I've tried different bracing, and I finally came up with a way that makes sense and I was able to get those resonances out, but it's something that I'll have to kind of pay attention to going forward. Uh, also worth noting is that for this particular driver, you'll notice that I've cut out the inside here. So I've kind of camfered it a little bit, chamfered it. Um, and that helps the speaker to breathe because if you do not do that, especially for smaller mid ranges, you'll get a choking of the air pressure behind it. And it shows up pretty readily in impedance measurements. But what the effect is, is a strong resonance. And it's usually gonna be in the mid-range area. It's very nasty sounding, uh, just draws attention to itself. So when you're doing measurements of raw drivers, if you've done that before, or if you are not aware, that's something you've gotta keep track of. And I learned that from Trolls Graveson, his website. I learned that back in like 2009 or 2010. So it's something that DIYers are very aware of, but it's something that if you are getting into measurements, uh, keep that in mind. But going forward, I thought I would share some of the results of those measurements and just kind of go ahead and jump right into it. So let me pull up my screen here. And this is the actual Clipple results. I've not done any kind of post-processing or anything like that. And we're going to start off with the TS parameters 
and I'll blow this up. Now, I didn't do the full excursion TS parameters because in order to do that, I would have to use the laser, and there is nowhere to point the laser except for at the side, and I really just didn't want to break out the laser. Uh, the other method is to use a sealed box enclosure, which I don't have one readily available. Uh, the alternate method then is to use a known mass, and I did not want to stick my typical mass, which is uh, it's like plumber's putty. I did not want to put that on this cone and, and potentially mess it up, make it look ugly. So I just four went, four gone, four go. I don't know. I didn't do that portion of the measurements. I just did the basic first step, which is to get the FS and the QTS. And then that way I could pass this information off to my friend. So he would kind of know if he decided to use it, what enclosure size he might need. And if I needed to do the extra stuff, then I would have done that as well. But from the measurements that we have here, you can see that the FS is 221.8 hertz. And it's a four inch driver. Uh, that's a relatively high for a four inch driver FS. So you can imagine that they're probably trading something off here. Most likely it's gonna be sensitivity. The uh, resistance at nominal is about 3.4 ohms. And is there anything else here of use for me? The QTS is 0.784. Now without measuring VAS, I don't know how large of an enclosure I'm gonna need, but I can just tell you that 0.7, that's, it's gonna need a very large enclosure, larger than VAS for sure, or VAS if you just wanna say it that way. So going forward then, let's go ahead and look at the horizontal results. And I have zero through 90 degrees here. And the on-axis response is that 2.83 volts, one meter. We can see it kind of rides the sensitivity line of about 90 dB. Uh, it's F3 is at about, uh, I'm gonna say maybe 250 Hertz, give or take. And the speaker is, you know, when you blow up the scale, this is something that's kind of worth noting. A lot of speakers, it's not unusual to see breakup uh, as much as 10 dB or 15 dB over the mean. A good speaker usually will have maybe no more than 5 dB of breakup. And in addition to that, it's pushed out beyond the beaming point a good octave or so. And with this particular speaker, you can figure the beaming point of a four inch uh, drive unit is gonna be somewhere, let's see here. We can actually do the math. So I'll walk you guys through how I do this calculator. Speed of sound, 13,500 divided by four. Uh, this is just ballpark diameter. And that gets us that. And then we'll do a half wavelength because that's kind of typical in order to design a crossover. And that's about 1687. So 1687, we'll see where that lines up. And you can kind of see a divergence of the response around this point. So that kind of makes sense. You would expect the, the breakup to be pushed out about an octave. And we do see that, you know, you, you're kind of getting the breakup out here at about, what is that, four and a half or so one, two, three, about four and a half kilohertz is where you're getting that breakup, that first strong resonance. And it's about plus seven or plus eight dB over the mean of 90 dB. Now, what this means is that you would need a pretty, uh, a reasonably high Q equalization right there or a notch filter. And you would need to bring it down at least maybe four or five dB to kind of get it on level with this trend. But the response is actually even going up as you go higher in frequency. So not only do you have this little bit of a uh, peaking here, you've got a general trend of a boost in response. So if you want to flatten that out, you're going to need to apply some maybe not a PEQ, maybe just a good shell filter to knock this level down or a very broad PEQ um, centered somewhere up here in the higher frequency region to, to bring that down. My final suggestion to the guy who loaned it to me is Scott, by the way. Uh, thanks, Scott, for loaning me the speaker. Was, I think he was between this and even the ScanSpeak 10F. And I said, personally, I'd probably choose the 10F because the 10F has about the same sensitivity, maybe possibly better, but it's in the same ballpark. Um, it does show the same kind of behavior with a peaking on axis response, but if memory serves, it was actually better. Uh, it wasn't, it was more well controlled, I guess that'd be a better way to put it. Uh, so that was just kind of my two cents. And with the 10F, it's, it's readily available. You can just order those from Mattisound pretty much at the drop of a hat. And uh, with this speaker, you have to order it through other means and you don't really know how long something like this, because it's a replacement speaker for a particular center channel that B&W makes. 
you don't know how long that's going to be available. Now, I think he's actually pulled a plug and, and decided to go a completely different route, but I thought you guys might be interested in seeing that. Now, I did do some distortion testing, and what are the, what's the one thing you always give up when you have relatively high SPL or sensitivity? And with this being a 90 dB uh, speaker, that's that's on the higher side of the norm. So I'd say this medium high sensitivity, not like horn loaded speaker sensitivity, but reasonably high sensitivity for a cone driver. So what's the one thing you give up? It's usually low end and that's exactly what you give up here. And if we look at the distortion measurements, we can see at around 300 Hertz, man, we just start to take off. We just ramp up and this is 86 dB at one meter. And then if I go to 96 dB at one meter, you can see that, man, it's just, and it's through the roof. This speaker would definitely need a crossover at 300 Hertz or so. And with that breakup, you know, showing up around four and a half kilohertz and that takeoff and the response, like I said, it's just personal thing. I don't know that this is a speaker for that particular project. You'll also notice a rise in distortion right here. Now this, my guess is that it's a uh, surround edge uh, out of phase kind of thing going on. And, and I've seen this before in other speakers. Usually you can see it show up in impedance sweep. And let's see if we see a little blip there. And sure enough, we do. At around this point, you can kind of see this disturbance in impedance. That's kind of quick analysis for the speaker. And that's just my, my thought pattern or thought train, I guess, when I'm looking at response results and, and general measurement results for my speaker. You may see these results and think, oh man, that's a perfect speaker for my project. And that's cool if it is, and that's great for you. But for the particular project that this guy was looking at, uh, I think he's better served looking at another option. And with that said, that's really it for this video. I didn't do a lot of extra testing because I didn't really see the point. Uh, we kind of answered the question based on the frequency response limitations and that was it. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. And I appreciate you guys watching. Um, thanks for your support too, because without it, you know, I wouldn't be able to do some of the things that I'm doing. So really, thank you. And with that said, I'm out. Talk to you later. Peace.